Hello and welcome to our third tutorial on how to get the most out of Zenbase. This will focus on a demonstration of how to use two of the advanced search features in Zenbase. The first is uh, Textpresso, which is our uh, literature text search function. And the second is our gene expression uh, and anatomy search. So first off, I'm going to demonstrate a, a simple application of Textpresso um, starting on a gene page here. So say you're interested in a particular gene, in this case SOX9. You decide you want to work on it and you want to see if there are reagents available for it, uh, specifically morpholinos. So there's a shortcut built into Zenbase under gene literature where you can either find papers referencing both SOX9 and any morpholino uh, using this, or else you can use Texpresso to almost certainly restrict it to those papers that are talking specifically about a SOX9 morpholino. So when you click on that, it will take you to a Texpresso search, which you can also uh, come to via the main menu bar search up here. Um, when you come here, uh, odds are this advanced search option will be selected as off. Um, since I've been playing with it, it's on. But this is one of the most important things that you can change for this search. And if you're interested in morpholinos, odds are you're only interested in results that will come from the materials section. So I'm going to leave those on and take everything else off. So we can use this as a simple search that you're used to in uh, any engine. Um, just by putting the keywords up there. We can adjust this such that we'll find those words associated um, within the same sentence, the same field of an article, that's the, the section essentially, or just happen to be in the same publication. We're going to stick with sentence though. Um, so I'm going to let that go. So we come to our results here and what we find quickly is that indeed people are willing to give the sequence for Morpholino specific to SOX9 and you can read the actual sentence that comes directly from the literature so that you know that you have the context appropriate. And what this does for you is saves you the effort of going in, downloading the PDF, seeing if it contains the information you're looking for and then if it's a bust you're stuck with all that extra effort. This cuts right to the chase, where you can see the actual text. Um, so, moreover, um, you'll notice that it'll do across all publications in Zenbase. So I find this sequence here, and I notice that in a separate publication, the same sequence is used, and the first is referenced. And there's actually kind of a chain of these. They re also refer back to the, to the first one. So we know this particular reagent is actually a pretty good standard used by the community. We can go ahead and copy that and um, move along without worrying about the quality of the sequence. So after this uh, I'll take you to an expression search um, and we'll come back to Texpresso when we have a more biological purpose. So the expression search is available from the main menu and other places. Um, as I mentioned in previous tutorial, you can just use this to search for the expression associated with a particular gene, um, or you can do it for a particular anatomy item. If you select any of these um, pre-populated click boxes, um, odds are you're going to take a lot of children terms with you. Um, so make sure you're actually interested in those if, um, if you use those click boxes. Um, alternately, you can type in your favorite anatomy terms here for kidney, for example. Um, sometimes this box will stick, but a quick backspace uh, and repopulating will help get you transferred over to here. And it's got to be over here for it to work. Um, so while that's all fine and good, and you can find pronephric kidney that way, it's not terribly different than going up here and using the anatomy item search and finding your anatomy item and the associated expression. What this is really great for is changing these restrictions, parameters, and logic to actually ask biological questions. So say instead of the pronephric kidney in general, I was interested in how you set up the anterior-posterior boundaries within the pronephric kidney. 
So that's a real biological question that real people ask. So I'm going to find the early, more anterior structures, say the early proximal tubule, and let's just do proximal again, it should come up. Grab the late proximal tubule as well. And I'm going to enter into this box, which is actually exclude these anatomy terms. Um, a lot of times this gets jumbled if your text isn't sized perfectly. Um, I'm going to put into this the distal parts, so the distal tubule, and run my search. And this should come up with any gene that fits these terms, the early and late proximal tubule, um, but not the late distal, uh, the later expression of the distal. So you find that, yes, in general, when you see expression in the kidney, it's actually much more anterior. Uh, it's complicated, but yeah. So in general, it looks pretty good. Moreover, it restricts you to a few terms pretty quickly. So say you already know about PTZK1, but this guy's um, something new to you. So we open the, up its gene page to take a look at it. Um, you can browse however you want through there. But now, what? and you can find all the information you want here, um, but say you want a deeper understanding. So actually, that's part of the power of Texpresso. So I'll open up a search here. I'll enter in our gene, SLC 5A1.1. And I'm going to use these filters here um, to restrict it to a couple of biological terms associated with SLC5A1. So when I click on these things under biological, and you should browse these, there's lots of different uh, terms that you can find up here. I want to find any Xenopus anatomy items associated with SLC5A1. So maybe it's not just in the kidney, maybe it's someplace else. Um, Next, I want to see if there's any particular genes that have a, an impact on SLC5A1. Say I want to knock it down and see what some potential targets would be. So, um, most of the parameters should be okay for this. I'm just going to go ahead and hit search. Um, if I would click this, it would actually clear everything, and I don't want to delay while we're on the podcast record. Um, while that populates, um, I'd have you realize that we actually went into all of the literature, downloaded the PDF um, through institutional access, and extracted all the text, put it into a separate database, um, such that it would all be searchable at the same time. And so I think we should have our output now. Yeah. Um, and that's how we get to these kind of shortcuts to the text. So as we browse, you notice that S, uh, SGLT1, what's that? When we go back to the gene page, find out it's actually a synonym of SLC5A1. So that's why it's important to keep your search synonyms box checked. Um, it already did that. That's why it was now unchecked. Um, now we notice anything in red is one of the semantic terms we selected. So RS1 is a gene. That was one of the filters we put on there. And small intestine is an anatomy item. All of these things are found within the same sentence as our gene that we searched for. And so just browsing this, we kind of quickly get the sense uh, epithelial cell, um, small intestine, kidney. Um, you kind of get the impression that this is an epithelial thing. And say you'd never heard of RS1. So, go to Zenbase again. I'll find out who that is. Um, come to a disambiguation page, pick this, and see that, hey, this is a pretty new gene. It's not, there's only 11 papers published on it in pretty much all species. Uh, we see it's important in cell adhesion. So, yes, this is probably something that has to do with uh, setting up an epithelium. And so then you can use Enbase to find the pertinent information. You can go about studying this. Um, and so that's just one example of how you can use uh, Texpresso in our anatomy searches to find biologically relevant stuff, find new targets, and enhance your research. Remember to feedback if there's anything else we can provide you.